the concept around virtualized and open RAN has been increasingly gaining attention, but still, the ecosystem is not as mature as some have expected. To talk about the trends in this market, I'm now joined by Geetha Ram, Global Head of Telco Infrastructure, Communications Technology Group at Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Hi, Geetha. Thanks for joining us today. So, it's been a few years since the hype around virtualized run and open run began. Why hasn't it taken off in volume as of yet? And what does HPE see as challenges with respect to the widespread adoption of virtualized and open run? Hi, Yanni. Uh, very good to be uh, with you. Appreciate you having me on the show. Uh, first of all, it is great to be back at uh, 2023 Mobile World Congress. Uh, where, you know, I think that it is uh, almost uh, back to the pre-pandemic uh, levels of uh, normalcy. I say almost. Um, now, going back to your uh, question of, you know, what has happened so far uh, with respect to Open RAN and VRAN, and, you know, there has been so much hype and things haven't uh, uh, taken uh, off, uh, ramped up as much as we would like it to be, right? The um, answer that, uh, you know, what uh, we've been seeing at least uh, is the TCO, the total cost of ownership. And every operator uh, looks to that and compares where they are today with respect to the appliance world, the custom appliance world, uh, and where they need to be with the open RAN and compares the total TCO of hardware, software, services, etc., and then says, you know, is this viable and, you know, um, how do we get there? OK. Uh, and, you know, the good thing about it is the last couple of years, there have been uh, a lot of operators looking at the TCO along with vendors like ourselves, like HPE and others, hardware and software, trying to get to the right TCO. They're not just basically saying uh, TCO uh, doesn't hold and therefore we are not going to do anything. Uh, they are actually working with all of us to get to the right TCO, so they haven't given up yet. And so I think that's why it is a little slow in terms of adoption as they get to the right TCO answers. And what is HP doing to address the total cost of ownership challenge? Uh, HP is doing a couple of things. Um, we look at it from a product and services perspective, okay? Uh, from a product perspective itself, we have um, uh, invested quite a bit in the uh, Open RAN, VRAN space with our uh, HP ProLiant DL110 uh, server product that is uh, workload optimized for RAN. Uh, so much so that we have several patents pending in this area. So it is one of those things where you get best of both worlds which is basically you get the open, flexible nature of an open server ecosystem with the uh, you know, partner NICs and cards and so on. And then you also uh, get the uh, workload optimization with respect to performance, power, and all of that. So that's on the product side. That is what we're doing. We're working with several of our partners to get the, the right TCO in terms of whether it is look aside acceleration with uh, uh, a certain technology or inline acceleration with a different type of technology and so on. Then we also work uh, on the other side, services, uh, to get the overall cost of ownership, which is system integration, as well as the whole business model in terms of uh, cash flow for the operators, making sure that that is taken care of with our HPE's uh, GreenLake services. So GreenLake is a concept where we can offer everything, including in this case, RAN as a service, where um, the customer, the operator, instead of making a huge investment where they see the ROI much later in the course of action, uh, they get to do uh, deployment and uh, pay per consumption. So in this case, as they pay for consumption, it is more closer to their uh, the ROI 
uh, you know, that they get from the uh, from their investments. So these are some of the things, both on the products as well as on the services side. You know, HPE is very much involved in making this uh, TCO, uh, you know, address this TCO challenge for the uh, operators. With all of these innovations, does HP think that Open Run will be able to compete with traditional Run on TCO, and is that sufficient? So, so Yanni, I think um, what it is, you know, the uh, the way we look at it is we are involved in the hardware stuff, and a lot of the operators are looking at hardware as well as the system integration part and services, right? Um, but the full equation also consists of software. And just like in core, where the software was also modularized and software was also um, considered in the TCO equation because software is a huge part of it, the same thing has to be done in Open RAN. And ORAN Alliance and organizations like that are helping with this by standardizing the APIs. So for example, it can't just be VRAN software, it has to be further than the VDU, VCU software, the VDU itself could be broken down into L1, L2, L3, uh, different uh, software modules, RIC, SMO, you know, the different modules, right? And when you have um, different uh, um, vendors bringing it, you know, bringing the uh, software portions together, you have a different business model and that will help with the overall TCO. Yes, it does add a little bit of uh, uh, complexity with respect to system integration and so on, but it does help with the TCO. So I think the overall TCO it has to be looked at from a much broader view, not just the hardware and its components, but the hardware, software, and the services, everything from system integration to staging and deployment and operations and so on. That's a very interesting point of view. And how about the system integration for disaggregated components of virtualized and open run? What does HP bring to the table to address this challenge? Yeah, um, uh, good question. So if you look at the system integration today, um, right now, one of the reasons why the uh, open run is slow in uh, taking off is the burden of the SI completely is falling upon the existing incumbent NEPs, uh, you know, the Nokias, the Ericsons, the Mavineers of the world, right? Uh, we need to get to a broader ecosystem. We need other traditional uh, SIs who uh, operate in the, uh, you know, the data center world, in the core world, they need to start integrating the different components of hardware and software for the open RAN and VRAN, okay? And for them to do that, then vendors like ourselves, like HPE, should provide, I mean, and it's just not just us, the hardware and the software vendors should provide tools and means for them to make it, uh, you know, more uh, repeatable, automatable, right? Uh, tools uh, such as, uh, you know, zero touch provisioning, making sure that the uh, uh, network-wide deployment is done, uh, upgrades, uh, operations aspects of it, staging uh, areas, staging the hardware with the software, and then you know migrating uh, those staged equipment to the appropriate uh, operator uh, sites, right? These are some of the tools that all of us, all of the vendors, even though we're not uh, you know, firsthand uh, participating in the SI activities, we need to be providing these tools. And once these tools are there from all of us, then more of the mainstream integrators uh, can come into the picture and then they can start to integrate, they can start to provide these uh, fully integrated, uh, you know, disaggregated RAN solutions to the operators. Only then I think the op uh, open RAN uh, adoption uh, will be uh, more widespread. And with these new solutions and trends in the market, what is HPE's outlook on the future of virtualized run and open run? 
So, you know, um, the good news and the bad news, right? Um, I mean, so far, you know, the bad news or uh, I would say the challenging news uh, has been that Open RAN has been slow in uh, taking off, right? And uh, everybody is just talking about, you know, how um, this is probably just a hype and, you know, what is going on? Is it going to take off, etc.? The good news is about two or three years ago, I would say there were a couple of operators who just jumped right in and started um, implementing VRAN, Open RAN, etc. And a whole lot of other tier one operators just sat on the sidelines and watched and said, I don't think we believe in this and I don't think this is going to take off, etc. And where the good news comes into play is these operators who were skeptical back then are now jumping in. They're not jumping in to just, you know, overall just uh, ramp up their network, but they're jumping in with all of these things like TCO studies uh, and 2023. There's a lot of them uh, doing trials. Uh, trials means they have come to some sort of a TCO understanding of what is viable for their business. And now they want to do trials in their, you know, key uh, networks to figure out if this is operationally viable. And then these very customers are planning on ramp ups for 24 and 25. So that is, to me, uh, much, much uh, better news than where we were a few years ago, where a lot of the operators just sat on the sidelines and then wanted to just watch and see how things evolved. These very operators and many more are getting involved in actually trying to solve this by bringing the ecosystem together in addressing things like, you know, the, the TCO, the system integration, you know, all of these challenges, right? So that's the outlook I see. Um, is it going to be uh, taking off, uh, you know, overnight? No. 23 is going to be a year of a number of uh, operators doing some trials, and many of them are taking off, you know, ramping up in 24. So that's what I see as the outlook right now for, uh, you know, the open RAN and VRAN systems. It is indeed very interesting to see all future developments in the field of virtualized and open RAN. Geetha, thank you for your insights on this topic. Thank you, Annie.